Britney Spears' brother, Brian Spears, was interviewed by Drew Plotkin for the podcast As Not Seen on TV. And his body language signals and verbal slips were revealing of new details about Britney's relationship with her family and her struggle with her conservatorship. As you might already know, Britney cannot make any decisions about her work or even her own life or money because for 13 years she has been under a conservatorship, controlled mainly by her father, Jamie Spears. What we want to know is if the rest of her family supports her or not. I already made a couple videos of Jamie Lynn and she's been trying to pin herself as a loving sister when she's not. Now it's Brian Spears' turn. We're going to dissect his interview now. Welcome back, my Battle Language Bodies. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Battle Language Guy, and it would be great if you join us by just liking this video, subscribing, and hitting that bell. Let's get down to it. The first thing you notice about Brian is his attitude of being bored and not engaging at all. His posture doesn't mean much at the time, but try to remember it because it will be important later on. The interviewer asks if there has been any time when he stepped up as Britney's big bro and had a conversation about if she liked the life she had, if she was enjoying it or having fun, and there is a passive aggressive angle to his answer. Let's see if you can spot it. I know how much she loves to sing and dance, so that was something that that's all she knows how to do. So if she doesn't do that, she's not doing what she, I don't know, was, you know, born to do. He not only despises her as singing and dancing is all that she knows, but he also, at that exact moment, raises his chin in arrogance. By the way, he never answers the question. You know, there was times throughout each one of them where everybody's, you know, exhausted. I would have to say probably after the Curious, I mean, the, the circus one in 2009, we were, I, I, I felt like, you know, we need to take a step back now. He never addresses directly if Britney loved what she was doing or if she was burned out or if he really talked with her about it. And that talking in terms of we doesn't inspire much trust. The question was a specific, it was about Britney, but he answered as the family. You're about to understand why is that relevant. Something that took me a bit to wrap my head around was the statement that Britney's fragrance lines with Elizabeth Arden alone have grossed a total of $100 billion. You know, my thing was new business development. That's what I kind of focused on, um, which was the branding and, you know, creating the Elizabeth Arden fragrance line with her. Just that alone has done over $100 billion in sales. Wait, $100 billion or $100 million? $100 billion. With a B. With a the, B. The Elizabeth Arden fragrance has done 100 billion. In sales globally. Wow. I, know. I immediately had a brain fart. And you already know me. I had to do some research about this just to have a better idea of how this works. And I found this report that back in 2013, Elizabeth Arden had sold 500 million bottles of Curious Britney Spears fragrance from 2004 to 2013. At a price of 39 dollars 5 each bottle, that would be nearly $20 billion in sales over those first 7 years. Now, up to this interview, we should add six more years that could easily duplicate that sum. And the fact that Britney has more than two dozen fragrance lines by now, then 100 billion in sales with a B doesn't sound that far-fetched. But now the obvious question. Yeah, you have to pay for manufacture, distribution, marketing, and so much more. And celebrities end up profiting at around 5 to 10% of total sales. If we assume the lowest bracket at 5%, that's five billion dollars. Even if it were, I don't know, one percent, it would be one billion dollars. But her total net worth, according to Forbes, is just 60 million. Where did all the money go? I mean, so what'd you guys do with it all, man? <laughs> and can I have some? I, to... <laughs> I wish I had some. So, no. Uh, easy come, have... easy go? <laughs> yeah, imagine, I mean, look, um, it's a complicated life is all I can. <laughs> the only thing that I'm sure is that that's a lot of baby powder, and this guy is absolutely deflecting that question. 
But so far, Brian has answered in a confident way, sometimes arrogant, mostly emotionally detached from the questions. And then, the free Britney topic is dropped. Are you aware of what's going on social media with your sister? With the millions of fans around the world pushing this movement? Watch his sudden change of attitude. I'm familiar with it. I mean, I'm not up to date. Um, I'm, my social media is not, like, I would say the best in the world. I think I have, like, four followers. So, like, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not lying. He changes posture, he leans in, he tenses his shoulders, he stutters. And the first thing he says is talk about himself. I have like four followers. His first reaction is to deflect the question. We're not talking about you. We don't care about your four followers. And there's that micro expression of terror. He opens his eyes more, he tenses his lips, and his neck muscles are tense too. Not to mention how he addresses Britney's fans. But I am aware of it, and by the way, like, you know, just to see that kind of, like, interest in, like, people and our fans and people... Your what? People and our fans and people... Baffling. But the best part comes right after that. Try to spot the hidden emotion that his face reveals for a split second. We truly appreciate it, you know. Um, it means a lot. We truly appreciate it, you know. Um, it means a lot. We truly appreciate it. It means a lot. But right after saying that, he shows a micro expression of contempt. And this is something critical if you want to be able to read people's hidden emotions. And Sarah can explain it so much better. My pleasure, he sues. Effectively, it's not necessary, and in fact, quite impractical to be looking out for facial emotion clues all the time. It's better to try to spot them right after listening to a question, or right after they give their answer, like in this case. Those are the exact moments when most hidden emotions slip in people's faces. Thanks, Sarah. Remember that if you want to learn to spot battle language clues, you can download my 100 battle language tips in a single PDF right in the description. Clues like this one when he is really pressing his lips and frowning. He's upset, maybe wishing that the interviewer changed the topic, and his posture is a great contrast with the attitude he had at the start of the interview. And here comes another deflection. Like, what does free Britney mean from your understanding? What are all these people speaking about when they're trying to say I, free I, Britney? Um, that I don't quite know, like, what their, what their meaning is, you know? Because, um, as I said, I don't follow it that well. Oh, sure. He doesn't have a clue what is Free Britney about, but he did that stop gesture with his hand like he doesn't want to keep talking about that and almost hiding his face to one side. You can make a sharp contrast of attitude with Drew's face expression and disposition that genuinely is asking the question. And don't miss the rest of the answer. Um, that I don't quite know like what their, what their meaning is, you know, because um, as I said, I don't follow it that well. But I am aware that, like, they feel like, you know, like it's, I don't know, maybe she's being confined or something or held against her will in some capacity. But I can't really, I, you know, I'm not, I can't speak for them. He talks a lot, but he doesn't answer the question at all. He doesn't even say anything about Britney being okay or that she's fine or that maybe this movement is nonsense because there's nothing wrong with her. Nothing. And I want to give Drew Plotkin an award. Drew, if you're watching this, you deserve a medal. Because it's really uncommon that an interviewer insists on a topic and presses on with the obvious follow-up question. And the obvious follow-up would be, well, but is Britney safe? Is she okay? But no, he spins the question this way. Have you ever seen anything that led you to be concerned that your sister was being held against her will? Uh, every day. They... Uh, every day. They... <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, like... Now, a lot happened here, so let me backtrack a bit. I mentioned the way Drew responded the question. If he had just said, is Britney okay? That will help an easy evasion. Oh, of course, she's totally fine, doing great. 
but instead he spins the questions to include Brian's perspective. He's addressing the witness inner dialogue, so to speak. This is a technique that you can use when making questions about someone's experience about an unclear event. Did you see anything that led you to be concerned? That sort of questioning forces the person to reach out for their inner dialogue and most of the time they will want to filter what they say and how they answer. They will take more time than usual to respond, they will give away body language clues and maybe will sleep and even contradict themselves. And that's exactly what happens here. Uh, every day. They <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, like... This is what's called an outlier reaction. He has been talking for 20 minutes. At no point he has given the slightest clue that he's a funny man, or he likes to joke, or even smile. In fact, they have been talking about less pressing issues and no smiles, no jokes, nada. The moment the free Britney topic arises, he becomes nervous, stutters, and even jokes. I seriously doubt that he was joking at that moment. But wait, there's more and it gets better. When the women in this family are very, very strong-minded and have their own opinion and they want to do what they want to do. And as much as I admire that as a guy and being like one of two guys in this entire family, it kind of sucks, man. What? Drew just wanted to know if Brian had seen anything odd, anything that could raise concerns about Britney and he somehow twists the topic to his misogynistic view of the world? But we've got our back cover by our friend Drew because he asked the question a third time because f Brian, can you answer the and question? When I say, you know, have you seen things over the course of your life, your experience, it's your little sister, obviously, I would imagine that you care very much about her, um, that would lead you to believe that there's any merit to a, a free Britney or that she is does not have the ability to, to go or say or do what she wants to do? No, I, I think I think at this point, I mean, she's been in this thing for quite some time now, um, obviously. Notice that so far, Brian doesn't have any problem looking at the camera while he is answering. But this time, his eyes are all over the place. He can't get himself to look at the camera. He stutters. So he's not sure about what he's saying and what's more, he has formed a barrier with one of his arms. He's extremely nervous and defensive. Now, when someone doesn't have any problem answering one question, for example, if I ask you what did you have for lunch yesterday, the first time I ask the question, you will have to make a mental backtrack to remember what you actually had for lunch. If I ask you the question a second time requesting more details, it will be easier for you to remember because you just have to make quick connections. If the food was salty or if it was cold, etc. If I ask you a third time, it will be even easier for you to recall the events of yesterday's lunch. Your body will be relaxed by this point. What happens with Brian with this question is the exact opposite. First he is nervous and he laughs, then he deflects the question with another topic and finally is nervous and defensive. Notice that you don't necessarily need the meaning of every gesture to spot how his body language clues stack against him. But it's not only body language clues that reveal Brian's real intentions. There are very particular wordings too. But, you know, in the end it's done it's been it's been it's been a great thing for our family. But, you know, in the end it's done it's been it's been it's been a great thing for our family. Again, he doesn't address or acknowledge Britney's well-being, but the family and to make it clear, a conservatorship, in essence, is aimed to protect the interests of the person under the conservatorship, in this case, Brittany. I always mention that no clue, verbal or nonverbal by itself, can lead you to a solid conclusion, but instead it's the stacking of every small signal that matters. Small signals like this one. You know, so how did she react to that when you spoke to her about that lack of control over her own uh, decisions? I'm, in the beginning, I'm sure it was hard, you know, I mean, imagine like, you know, I'm in the beginning, I'm sure it was hard, you know, I mean, imagine like, you know. Another clever question that allowed us to confirm the relationship between Brian and Brittany. Drew asks, how did she react when you spoke to her about that lack of control? The fact is that Drew doesn't know, has no idea if Brian actually talked with Brittany about her feelings on the conservatorship. He just shoots the question. And Brian takes the bait. He says, in the beginning it was hard, I imagine. He just revealed that he never talked with Britney about how she felt. 
less than one minute ago, he was talking about family, that we have been together through all this, blah, blah, blah. And now we know that he didn't even care about how Britney felt. How convenient. And he's really uncomfortable with the question because he does that single shoulder shrug when answering. He's so cynical that he even tries to save face. What I think kind of got us all through it is like we've been, all of us have been pretty close all these years. All of us have been pretty close all these years. But when it comes to talk about his dad, he goes all in with lies. And your dad was a, a was a big part of that at the beginning, and he remains a very uh, active part of the conservatorship, from what I've seen mm -hmm. and read. Is that accurate? Yeah. And yeah. how, I, I'm, how I'm is, not for sure exactly how that what, where his, what his role is, but yeah, he's he's very active in it. I, how, I'm, how I'm is, not for sure exactly how that what, where his, what his role is, but yeah, he's he's very active in it. I don't understand. You said that you've been really close together as a family, that this has helped you all these years, but you claim to not know exactly what is the role of your dad in the conservatorship? Give me a break. That must be the reason why you swallow hard at that moment. And can you spot his reaction when Drew mentions that Britney wants the conservatorship to end? Watch closely. Does it continue after August 22nd is the date it is set to expire right now? Or does it end, which I believe that's what your sister wants, right? Is, is for the conservatorship to end? That's what this is about? I'm assuming that, that I don't, I can't speak for that, to be honest with you, because I don't know what the legal, what, where the legal status is or what, you know. Which I believe that's what your sister wants, right? Is, is for the conservatorship to end? That's what this is about. This is a perfect example of an emotional reaction. As Drew says, what your sister wants this conservatorship to end, he clenches his left fist. You can almost see white knuckles. That's covered anger. He doesn't want Britney to have any say in this, much less anything about ending the conservatorship. And what about all the people on social media saying that she wants to end it? What the real truth is, because you know, like there's so much false press out there. He tries to discredit how fans are concerned about Britney affirming that there's so much false press out there. By the way, we're half an hour into the interview and he hasn't said the first thing about Britney being okay or not. Why can't he set the record straight? Oh, right! Maybe it's because she's not okay and she wants out. But Brian seems to be the kind of people who has no problem in manipulating you by twisting the narrative. Just like this. So yeah, she's she's wanted to get out of it for quite some time. What level of that it is the reality? I, who knows? You know, it's like when you say that meaning, you're not sure if she means what she says. Well, I mean, think about it. She's been surrounded by people and a team of people since she was 15. So, at what level does everyone just walk away, or at like what level does that get reduced? What he just did is a manipulation technique. First, he conceded. Yeah, she's wanted to get out for quite some time. That makes you lower your guard because you say, hey, the man is finally coming clean. But then he says that she's been surrounded by a group of people since she was 15, meaning her managers, the producers, the assistants, etc. So he's trying to blame the fact that an artist needs a group of people to help them with their show business and try to disguise the conservatorship as such. Like saying, at what point can she really leave the conservatorship? Because anyway, her life as an artist means that she will be surrounded by dozens of people. And this is a way to confirm that Brian is a manipulator because he's trying to twist the concept of a conservatorship as if it were the regular life of an artist when it's not. This is a version of gaslighting. This is an extremely important when you are trying to unmask a manipulator because they will challenge your perceptions, your concepts in such a way that you will doubt your own point of view. There were 15 minutes left of the interview, but they were mostly about topics unrelated to Britney. What I noticed is that he had no problem talking about any details of Jamie Lynn or her career. So you spend 45 minutes dodging questions about Britney and her well-being, and right after that you talk about Jamie Lynn like she were your protege. I think it makes so much easier to guess the answer to the next question. Brian, we want to know, who's your favorite sister? 
Oh, Lord. I can't really answer that or about getting in trouble, but there definitely is one. I promise you that. <laughs> I said there definitely is one. But there's definitely one. But I can't one. say. By the way, now that I remember, there was a slip of the tongue right at the start of the interview. When I was like, I'm the oldest, so of the two, I mean, number three. When I was like, I'm the oldest, so of the two, I mean, number three. That's a strange slip of the tongue. How can he forget that he has two sisters? It kind of looks like subconsciously he thinks one of them is not really one of them. Like, Jamie Lynn and I are the normal ones and Britney is the crazy cash cow. And the very last question in the last 60 seconds of this interview was something that everyone wanted to know. Is Britney in control right now of her social media account or? Yeah, yeah, she is. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know how what the details are of it, of like, I don't know. Of, if she actually physically does it or if she sends it to you know a team but yes she is we have many factors here the fact that he did a long blink and press his lips right after answering that question means that he did not like it and i already ruled out any possibility that britney could be doing any of her posts without any censorship and you can watch my video where i explain it in detail Besides, there's something that we haven't taken into account yet regarding her Instagram. Do you think that this conservatorship machine, led by her father, Jamie Spears, was going to let Britney handle an audience of tens of millions of people with unforeseeable consequences? They would never risk that Britney exposed them to the world like she did in her most recent court hearing. And that's my point behind posts like this that attacked both her father and her sister, which I'm absolutely sure that are just a facade to release some steam and buy some time for the ones responsible for all this. Make no mistake, these people are desperate to keep Britney under control because if she breaks free, they could be facing criminal charges. I've got more videos about Britney's case so you can better understand what she's going through. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of my battle language analysis and tips. Take care my battle language bodies!